Hello friends, welcome back to yet another session of product and brand management and as we are progressing and we are looking at the strategic perspective associated with product and brand management, we are introducing not only concepts, but concepts as strategies which have applications which are related to taking product to the customer and establishing the product in the minds of the customer. That is what is positioning and we would be talking about this. Last time you remember we talked about product differentiation which is elemental for customer to realize that she is buying something special with regards to the needs and the money she would be departing with. So, here comes a discussion on positioning and let us you know try and imagine this with an interesting element of message as well, words because words, visuals, taglines these are very important for positioning of, uh, of a product in the minds of the customer. And for this you may refer to my course on integrated marketing communication uh, which was you know uh, released in January 2022. Uh, so, now you see what is positioning? Positioning starts with a product, a piece of merchandise, a service, a company, an institution or even a person because uh, when we discuss the definition of product we discuss these elements uh, you know as products. Positioning is not what you do to a product, it is what you do to the minds of the prospect, how you put up that product as an image or image of the product in the minds of the customers. You position the product in the prospect's mind. This is uh, you know uh, what what Reese and Trout they have expressed in their pivotal book on positioning, a very renowned uh, text, uh, and, and you may refer to that. And we have also referred to that for this. So, you see, for example, Mysore sandal purity and natural fragrance. You know, Mysore sandal soap projects or positions itself with the perspective of purity and natural fragrance. Margot talks about herbal and associated with neem. So, when you say Margot, neem perspective comes to you and then the health related benefits of neem also comes to you. So, so that is what positioning is, you know how it gets established in your mind. And we, we talked about uh, you know elements uh, in, in differentiation for example, durability. So, some of the products they, they might talk of durability, Bangar cement you know or let us say uh, Goel TMT Sarya. So, so those kind of uh, you know durable elements or, or some car says dream machine kind of. So, they are putting up an aspiration but with strength when they project the roar of the engine in their advertisements and messages. Then Detol always has, has been talking of uh, hygiene, Savlon has been talking of hygiene and so on. So, having this glimpse of positioning let us dwell into this subject you see, but, but let us ponder upon this thought why positioning. Positioning is the single largest influence on the buying decision actually. If you have created an image which gels with the perception which a customer carries about the kind of product he wants to purchase in a particular category, if that matches then it would be a very, very smooth transaction and that is what you know uh, a producer wants, a manufacturer wants and most of all a product and a brand manager wants. Jeffrey Moore in his book Crossing the Chasm has, has talked about this and uh, 
you know that is an interesting text also and, and for you to refer because you see there it, it is not possible for me to talk about so many things in uh, as as uh, a digression now and then uh, uh, that is why I am referring to different kinds of texts which would be helpful for you to understand and carry forward the understanding of the subject and, and this is uh, you know these are wonderful references. So, you see Xerox was the first company to manufacture and sell photocopy machines. When you say Xerox, we all know photocopy comes to our mind and as the time went on today Canon also enjoys that kind of a position and, and several other you know photocopiers. So, but Xerox enjoyed it for a very, very long time and it, it you know uh, in India they collaborated earlier in earlier days with Modi. So, uh, Modi Xerox became a brand in itself. I, I remember you know it was a very respectable kind of uh, a machine in every office at that time and there were specific maintenance engineers coming to different offices to maintain that machine and so on you know and, and, and that was a capability of an office to have a Xerox machine because there were so many Xerox outlets, commercial outlets which were working for photocopying your documents day in day out and they were so busy because everyone had to go to you know get the document Xerox to a Xerox parlor actually. So, th there were Xerox parlors, there were there were specific entrepreneurs which were created because of Xerox. There were there were specific you know lease agreements with uh, with the buyers and so on and you know there, there was an entrepreneurial model associated with Xerox in India and in several other places of course. So, so you see Xerox actually positioned itself with, with the perspective of photocopiers so vast, so deep that when Xerox they released you know their data system, fax machine and PC that was not much accepted as you know uh, thought of Xerox or uh, as thought of basically by, by customers and Xerox lost dollars because it could not persuade prospects to change their opinions or to accept the introductions in other categories. You see uh, here I want to emphasize a very important point is that Xerox was very successful in positioning their name with reference to a photocopier. Side by side I am introducing the aspect of that if something gets fixed in terms of being an image in your mind, the other product with the same name might not generate a desire in the minds of the customer or might not generate a trust that the same name would you know traverse travel to the efficiency of the other product in a similar fashion uh, you know it had it had uh, done in the other case. That means, it gets the name, the brand name gets fixed with the product's image. So, sometimes it is beneficial for example, in case of Patanjali, many products of Patanjali, you, you, you just say Patanjali X, Patanjali Y, Patanjali Dant Kanti. So, so uh, you know then uh, definitely you do, do, not, do not have uh, you know second opinion about that in many cases. So, many cases it works well many cases it does not work well. We will talk about it, why it happens, how it happens, we will refer to several kinds of examples in due course of time, but here we are specifically referring to the elements of how successful Xerox was in terms of their you know positioning of a photocopier in the minds of the customer and what does it mean. Possible steps to position a product are related to you know in general the positioning decision has four steps. And, and there can be several and uh, I have always been mentioning in front of you that you see as a student of marketing in product and brand management especially you can think in terms of adding on several steps from your own side with the help of the understanding you are uh, you know developing uh, through and through. So, you see here the first step can be looked upon with, the, with reference to uh, you know identifying alternative positioning themes by consulting the advertising and account team, the product team and the past marketing plans. Product team is very, very important in suggesting on the perspective around the product. For example, a hair oil. Now, product team would be able to tell you that 
should it be positioned with reference to the benefits should it be uh, you know positioned with reference to the styling should it be uh, positioned with reference to some other aspect so so that is how where product team would emphasize and that is what is you know reflected in the messages then to screen the alternatives according to whether each is meaningful to uh, to the customers and i have been emphasizing upon this meaningfulness uh, element for quite some time you see meaning being meaningful is something related to which actually generates meaning for the customer so uh, it can have a differentiation in terms of interpretation uh, for large number of customers so here i i cannot say that it's a mathematical kind of an equation in terms of generating a particular kind of a meaning until unless it is a core product or we are talking of very specific benefits then whether you know each is feasible given the firm and product resources and customer perceptions whether you know each is competitively sensible and whether each is helpful for meeting the product objective the third element is select the position that best satisfied satisfies these criteria and can be sold to the marketing organization and fourth is implement programs that is advertising consistent with the product position selected message gives value to the positioning which a product manager wants to have about his product in the minds of the customers for example if it's it's such a 100 cc motorbike then product manager would tell you that should it be positioned with reference to reliability durability ease of use mileage low maintenance and what and then product manager would like to add you know the uh, engine efficiency also and, and we have referred to several examples to elaborate upon that product positioning can be based on various dimensions the perceived position of a product in the customer's mind can be represented graphically in the so called perceptual map through a process which is known as perceptual mapping and i have been referring to two dimensional planes now and then and it's such a common art which we have developed in due course of time in marketing especially and some and many other you know disciplines so just to give us a glimpse of the direction the position where the product lies in in terms of a quadrant so that we can think of it with you know two or or uh, probably several other dimensions if we want to add those so here you know this this perceptual map is quite helpful and source is mentioned from where this map has been taken and several other sources are there wherein you can talk of you know we think of perceptual maps and they have projected that well you see it's a it's such a hypothetical perceptual map from the car market where ferrari is perceived as high priced and sporty looking while hyundai i20 is you know medium priced and a city family car sort of if you have created that kind of you know dimensions in terms of price and sporty looks of a car you can change those dimensions you can talk of you know price and family utility so there then you would have you know probably innova or or uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, hexa or you can have some other family cars you know large family cars which would be you know uh, comfortable in this this uh, zone then you can have some suv looking vehicles which have sporty looks also which are family cars also for example xuv 700 that that falls under you know a, a specific category and quadrant and so on and and uh, we have been referring to categorization uh, earlier also when we talked of classification and categorization you know and and product categories specially because you want to look at your product under some category so that you can talk about that uh, you know uh, that specific element 
related to that category and uh, positioning also is deeply related to that kind of a thought process. So, and it actually you know is, is somewhat driven or sometimes it drives category uh, element of a product positioning. Positioning and then one more very important thing which I want to add here is when you say that positioning is creating the, mind, uh, the image in the minds of the customers, one very important thing which one must remember at this stage is that that image which you would like to create in the minds of the customer is related to your marketing research which has told you that this is the image customer would like to have about this kind of a product along with your desire and your understanding as a product manager who is instrumental in developing this product. So, you may add your value and values to that perspective which you want to have in the minds of the customer at the end of the day. So, it is it's an all encompassing kind of uh, you know an exercise when we talk of positioning. Perceptual mapping has various applications such as positioning by attribute, attribute we have referred to already and, and that is how all those terms are coming you know uh, to our use now. So, you see a specific product characteristic or attribute is emphasized for example, think small of the Volkswagen Beetle, a very fine car you know it is one of my personal likings, but again the point is that is how they, they you know project it. So, it is an efficient car, a wonderful drive, an engineering marvel since it was developed and, and uh, you know the positioning is related to think small, the appropriateness of the size for the particular usage of the customers and so on. Then there are elements of positioning by benefits, you know emphasis is given to the benefit provided to the customer. For example, boost is the secret of my energy. Do you remember Mr. Kapil Dev saying that and Mr. Sachin Tendulkar also within that same advertisement since ages it has been coming off you know when Mr. Kapil was a star in Indian cricket, he has always been still is a star. And, and uh, Mr. Tenulkar was a rising star and both of them they came up in this you know and all these stalwarts uh, uh, Mr. Sachin became Bharat Ratna later on. So, now you see uh, boost is the secret of my energy actually you know that that is the particular level of benefit based positioning. Positioning by application, now emphasis is given to the product use for example, moves a ah, say Aha tak. Ah, ah means the expression of pain, you know. Ah, I, I now, move lagakar, apply move before you sleep actually. So, and then you see, uh, uh, I, I saw Mr. Bachchan talking about Himani fast relief, dard bhagai chutki mein. Now, uh, you know, that attracted me towards that, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of, uh, you know. Uh, Himani fast relief uh, and, and uh, when I had my shoulder pain, it really worked actually. I do not know, uh, definitely ingredients are good and uh, it is a beneficial product, so that is why it is working. But I do not know that, that that assurance from Mr. Bachchan was actually coupling up with or, or emphasizing upon you know the, the kind of relief I felt was working or no, probably it was and that is where positioning comes in, dard bhagai chutki mein kind of. It, it's, it works. Now, and, and it is not a prescription anyways, it is my personal experience which I am sharing with you. So, it is a disclaimer that it is personal choice. Yeah. Positioning by competitor, you see differentiation from competitive offerings is emphasized. For example, Big Bazaar says, isse sasta aur achha kahi nahi. If you are sure of that, if you know that this is this is you know uh, would be felt by the customer and you see this is sometimes an overstatement but big bazaar was sure of that so they came up with this kind of a statement and probably their customers they they would have felt it because i have not found any, any refutation in the parts on the parts of the customer although customers started liking this actually so you see that is where if you are sure of this Many times uh, product they do try to emphasize comparative element, but customer does not find you know it, it, it so justifiable, they do not find it you know uh, uh, to be 
um, I, I should not say trustworthy, but uh, it does not confirm. So, so that is why they do not buy this argument. Positioning by product user, the profile of the target market is stressed for example. So, L'Oreal because we are worth it and, and that comes you know from the side of the changes which their customers would have expressed in due course of time. Dove also went for such kind of a beautiful campaign, a very emphasizing campaign which converted this you know product into an, a brand in itself. And, and uh, that lots of case studies and you see we in the field of marketing and business whenever something is going on well we take it as a case study and we enjoyed it like anything basically in due course of time and Dove case study was discussed in almost all the B schools and one of the topmost B schools in the country in Department of Management Studies IIT Roorkee where I am working. So, so that where we, we discussed here as well. Now positioning by product class. You know, it is related to emphasis, wherein emphasis is given to the creation of distinct product class, 7 up, the uncola. Now, that, that is also interesting. And you see, here we are getting a flavor of integrated marketing communication. We are, we are getting a flavor of the taglines, we are getting a flavor of linguistic relativity, we are getting a, a flavor of, you know, imagination. Which, which accompanies a, products a product manager's thoughts uh, along with his customer's feedback or customer's insight expressed through uh, a communication managers or creative, uh, you know, creative artists or creators thoughts actually. So, all these things they are getting in sequence all together. There are some errors related to positioning as well. So, let us spend few minutes on these errors. You see, despite the efforts of companies to differentiate their products on many occasions, mistakes can be made like under positioning. Now, it is very interesting and how do we know that? You see, the point is whenever we try to start positioning our products, at that particular moment, we start actually tracking the positioning intensity exercise and effort we are making because that is the only methodology that means we start interacting with the customers in whose mind we are you know putting up the image of our product and it's very simple for example you talk to a small child about a particular you know fairy tale projected in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a in a book now immediately the child would express that how well the child liked that fairy tale. For example, a particular movie. So, so a, a cartoon character for example. So, so, we immediately start getting to know and then we start customizing our message before it fixes up as an image. Here one must remember that image does not get formed instantaneously almost all the times. I, I would say there, there are few exceptions, but image does not get formed instantaneously. So, it takes lots of time and it takes lots of time to get away as well. So, we have to be conscious on both the things and when it is getting formed, we have to follow the formation process of that image actually. So, that it forms well and it actually gels as I said with the perception which customer wants to carry about that kind of a particular product. For example, Dar ke aage jeet hai, Mountain Dew actually in their story of you know in, in marketing the product they have tried to change or you know i should say reposition the product for a different or a vaster kind of an vast kind of an audience uh, or, or uh, target market in due course of time but somehow their customer actually tried and projected and suggested that they should remain where they are in terms of the positioning and they came back with this dar ke aage jeet campaign which is very successful mountain, mountain dew as we all know is a very high selling product. So, see under positioning is seen as just another entry in a crowded market. Failing to present a strong central benefit or reason to buy the product. For example, Pepsi introduced its clear crystal Pepsi, customer not was not impressed as they did not see clarity as an important benefit in 
soft drink. Uh, this is taken from several articles which came up about Pepsi. I am not sure of the exact reason customer would have expressed in terms of the clarity, but somehow positioning did not work. That is, that is a simple kind of a point of discussion. I am not denouncing Pepsi's effort or Pepsi's product basically here. But again, the point is that this is just an indication that this and if this would have worked, we would have said that that clarity message has actually worked. So, and then many a times you see we when we go for retrospective analysis, it is uh, you know uh, it becomes evident to us that this would have been the reason. Probably it might not have been the reason actually. It is our understanding that that was the specific reason and so on. So, so it is a matter of discussion and I am just putting an example in front of you. Over positioning you know buyers may have a narrow image of the product. It refers to the error when firm when a firm positions itself for some specific group, but due to over positioning that particular group believe that it is not for their class, it is for some higher class customer group and so on. And there have been several products which have been introduced with you know kind of a projection. I remember of uh, you know a fabric or, or uh, you know uh, shirting and suiting uh, advertisement which actually projected that to be uh, you know an uh, uh, meant for uh, with a high paying capacity and although the price of the product was not so high. So, in reality it was actually meant to uh, you know project itself for people who want to pay less or who want to purchase a fabric for a common usage I should say anyone who can purchase that. But, but uh, somehow it mixed up and, and uh, it, it could not do so well. Again as I am saying at this moment when you look at that retrospectively you can point out at positioning perspective although probably there would have been other reasons responsible for that as well. But the message is clear that positioning is an important element. Confused positioning it is do not do not take it as, as, as a technical term it is a term which has been used by several authors and we have, we have referred to the source here. So, so we are we are referring you know standard books here. Now you see confused positioning is where buyers may be confused as to what a brand stands for usually because of the existence of many different communication messages or the changes of positioning strategies. And it has happened in case of several products related to milk or, or you know many a times automotives we have seen that you know it was projected in a particular fashion and somehow and I remember there was a motorbike launched in India long back wherein you know different colors of the motorbike was uh, you know they were projected several attempts were made to project that motorbike which was definitely a fairly good vehicle, but somehow it did not work. There were several products by you know uh, many uh, automotive manufacturers which were actually uh, related to best of the brand ambassadors also and, and very good products uh, at, the, at, the, at their launch levels but somehow could not sustain the sales level in due course of time and you can just think of those and you can just count on those and you can just go into the history of you know how somehow it did not connote the kind of uh, expectation customer wanted to have about that kind of a product. Doubtful positioning also is there when buyers may doubt about the claims in view of the products features, price of distribution and uh, you know so on and, and it happens many a times in case of you know hair gain products or you know weight loss uh, products and so on. I tell you one thing very honestly these products you know the product manager wants you to use these products and work upon the prescription associated with these products that means that is how you will maintain the usage of this these products and th that is how you will work along with these products we feel that we will put hair uh, gain products and uh, keep on you know uh, going the way we have been in terms of you know not caring our hair that much and we will save our hair believe me uh, I have uh, you know uh, kind of uh, sort of seen people who have not uh, enjoyed that and, and although 
do not do not uh, look at me like that I have not used any hair gain oil uh, till now uh, it is a natural loss which I am going through. So, and then uh, weight loss I have seen many people trying weight loss prescriptions and care products and not working along with that and then blaming the products. So, so that is that is uh, you know kind of and I am not denouncing any customer here and not denouncing any person here it is just a personal observation and many a times uh, you know an element of experience. But positioning is that the message what, uh, what I want to bring in front of you is that positioning is related to the image which the product manager wants to create in the minds of the customers on the basis of the research he would have gone through wherein customer would have told that this product should be projected as this that is what I expect out of this product and then the creator puts up a message in association with that. So, I will leave you with the thoughts which we have discussed in this session around positioning, I will be coming back to you with several other elements which are very, very important in terms of positioning with some case studies or, or let us say you know short stories and then I would be putting up some elements which are let us say you know uh, which will elaborate your view regarding positioning basically a non-linear view related to positioning. So, bear with me till then, goodbye.